Hello everybody and today we'll be predicting the 2023-2024 Minnesota Vikings record. Now the Vikings are kind of a crazy team and to fully understand their potential for next season we'll need to take a deep dive into their history. The 2022-2023 Minnesota Vikings were a very interesting team to say the least. Led by first year head coach Kevin O'Connell and first year GM Kwesi Dufamensa, the Vikings were working on reshaping and molding the organization into a championship contending team. There wasn't the highest of expectations for the Vikings' regular season success as they finished 8-9 and nine the prior year. Most quote-unquote experts had the Vikings finishing under 10 ends, 10 wins around more like 9-8, 8-9 eight, eight like the previous year. Now, Mike Zimmer, their previous head coach for their long time, Vikings head coach, had been serving for 8 years in his respective position, along with GM Rick Spielman, who had been serving as GM for a decade. Now, under the old regime, the main focus was having a top defense every single year. They would only mainly draft defensive players, by the exception of like, who Justin Jefferson and then Christian Derrissaw in the later years. Um, but they were focusing on drafting defensive players to have this top defense, and this proved true and effective when, uh, until Zimmer and Spielman's final years in Minnesota, when the defense kind of bottomed them out. And after 2019, 2018, 2019. That tough Minnesota defense was no more and turned into a mid-to-bottom fiender unit in the league, which is when Minnesota decided to fire Mike Zimmer and Rick Spielman to bring in, to bring in two young guns and Kevin O'Connell and Kwesi Dufamensa to take over this organization to try to become a championship contending team. Now, after the Vikings um, fired Mike Zimmer and uh, Rick Spielman, they brought in um, Kevin O'Connell, who was the Rams' former offensive coordinator, which won the Super Bowl that year, and GM... Kwesi Dufamensa had been a long time like analytics student with the Browns, I think, and the 49ers. But um but overall this team was like feeling new, feeling fresh, and had a pretty red hot offense with the best wide receiver in the NFL. And the Vikings, now under a new regime, had a red hot offensive scheme with undoubtedly the best receiver in the NFL, alongside arguably a top ten quarterback with Kirk Cousins. Now they had some long-time vets with, like, Adam Thielen at wide receiver two, veteran running back Dalvin Cook, um, Eric Hendricks at linebacker, Hitman Harry at safety. Nah, this offense and this defense looked pretty sweet heading into 2023, 2022, 2023. Now, the defense, it was, it was like, all right, but no one expected, expected the defense to be as bad as it was last year. Now, Adam Thielen kind of fell off a cliff, not going to lie, in his final year in Minnesota, struggling to earn – struggling to learn the new offense and lack of productivity led to Jefferson having to pretty much be the entire offense and one one guy's entire offense is it's, it's gonna work sometimes but it's not gonna work and that proved true in the Cowboys game and the 49ers game not 49ers game and the, the Eagles game and even the Packers game that in the year relying on one guy does not work especially the Giants game too I'm getting to that later in the video now, even with all these aging vets on both sides of the ball and the, and the horrid bottom feeder defense, the Vikings miraculously won 13 games to finish the season 13-4. and four. Will this happen next season, winning over 13 games? Now, the simple answer is no. The 2022-2023 Vikings were season was magical and almost impossible to replicate, and it will not be repeated ever. It will not be repeated ever. Let's quote me on that. Just the sheer amount of, like, craziness and half some of it was luck um it's just too crazy because first off their point differential alone was an insane amount of at negative three now a negative three point differential is not uncommon in the fact that in fact it's like a usual occurrence for teams to be in the negatives in the negative point differential but most of these teams have under like five wins like but for a team to have 13 wins that have a negative point differential has never been heard of and just there's the sheer amount of close games they won by coming back was insane and quite frankly unheard of. Now, the Vikings were rolling in the playoffs at 13-4, and four, looking to make a push in the playoffs, but got eliminated first round by the New York Giants. What happened? The reason why the Vikings lost the playoff game came down to two essential things, pretty much. Horrible defense, that's pretty much obvious and the team solely relying on Justin Jefferson to win football games and not relying, not not, and, uh, not giving him any support to try to get to the next level. When teams know where the ball is going every single play, it's pretty easy to shut it down. 
Now, the Giants essentially went in the game saying that we're going to go all out. We're going to solely guard Jefferson, lock him up, and if, if uh, someone else breaks out and we lose, so be it. But Jefferson's not going to be the reason we will lose this football game. Now, that strategy that the Giants went into the football game with worked. Jefferson was held to seven receptions, for 47 yards, and the Vikings lost 31-24. to Now, what did the Giants do to shut down Jefferson? Well, they simply learned from their mistakes. The first time the Giants faced off against the Vikings, Jefferson finished with 12 receptions for 133 receiving yards and one receiving touchdown. Now, the Giants could not have this happen again, so they decided to play one quarterback by pressing J.J. right off the line with a second cornerback with help on the side and a safety over top. Now, the now three players on the field were just dedicated for the entire game to just stay on Jefferson, and it worked shutting Jefferson down. Now, but why did this work? Well, simply, J.J. had no help besides Hawkinson, who was a good heart, who was a good target, but Jefferson needed a second receiver to make a threat to occupy, occupy the defense, as you could, theori- you could theoretically put a defensive, I mean, put a linebacker on a tight end, even though that might not work all the time, you can theoretically do that. But the Vikings finally realized this and went into the offseason, releasing longtime veteran wide receiver Adam Thielen, who had slowed down production and went out and drafted USC wide receiver Jordan Addison, who is a fully developed route tree, in my opinion, and has burner speed. Now, for me, I'm, I've been comping him to um, Devonta Smith, which I think is a very, very fair comparison considering their size, weight, and they're both elite route running and burner speed now the vikings wide receiver core for 2022 2023 2024 will be very scary in the fact they have kj osborne who is a very very good very very good wide receiver who could hypothetically be a wide receiver too although he's not consistent enough to be a wide receiver too but if he can break out more like he did against the lions in the week two week three game He will be a very, very good receiver, along with Jalen Naylor, who has a very high ceiling, who can be a good rotational player for the Vikings to give Jefferson breathers and still be a threat on the field. Now, the biggest thing for the Vikings in next season is if their defense can turn around, can Brian Flores right the wrongs from last season and fix Ed Donatello's defense? Will it just be a scheme issue, or was it really just the defense was that bad? Now, if if hopefully it was just a scheme issue because... Brian Flores' scheme will utilize blitzing safeties, which is the thing that Harrison Smith is very, very good at, and play the strengths of the defense, not to the weaknesses like Ed Donatello was doing. But if the defense can play well, even be a top 20, top 15 unit, it just can't be a bottom feeder. If it can be a top 20, top 15 unit, I think the Vikings could be upwards to 10 wins. Now, their success next year is solely based on how well their defense will be doing. So keep that in mind in my predictions for the record. Now that we fully set up everything and set up the story, kind of, we can get into the 2023-2024 record predictions. Week 1, the Vikings will be opening against Tampa Bay. Now, the Vikings are coming into the season feeling good, facing off uh, a Bucks team that is, to- that is without Tom Brady. Now, don't let that fool you, fool you, though. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers still have an elite defense, along with a great wide receiver core with Mike Evans, who is very consistent, and he will stay consistent. And a, and a very, very good Chris Godwin. Now, the only major issue on the field, the major, the only major issue for this team on the field is that their quarterback, there's no, no, there's no clear starter, but most likely option for week one would be Baker Mayfield, who was a former number one overall pick with the Browns, but he's not been, he's not lived up to that uh, number one overall pick standard. Now, the Vikings started off slow last year, week one to the Packers, but still won the game. And I have it, but I just had this weird gut feeling that the Vikings will lose this game. I just do. It's a very losable game for the Vikings to take a loss here. And it's a very, it'd be Vikings fashion to do this. So I have them taking a loss week one to Tampa Bay to open up the season 0 1. The Vikings are just coming off a, t- a tough loss to the Bu- Tampa Bay Buccaneers heading into Philadelphia to face the Eagles in week two. Now, the Red Hot Eagles came into the season with a bitter taste in their mouth after losing the Super Bowl to the Kansas City Chiefs. Now, the Eagles will want to take care of business this season and hoist the Lombardi at the end of it. And this will be one of the first of many tests for the Vikings to see what has improved or changed from last season. Now, the Vikings lost in Philadelphia Week 2 last season, and it was a blowout. I think O'Connell, with some more head coaching experience, will be able to contain this game more 
and make it a little bit more respectable, but I have the Vikings still taking a loss here, open up 0-2. The Vikings will be facing off the Chargers week three, and they're 0-2, and they're not feeling good. But the Chargers are a very talented team, but they have horrible coaching, and nothing seems to have changed with their coaching department. And I have a feeling, and I expect the Vikings to be the Chargers here, even though it will be a close game. I trust Kevin O'Connell and the Vikings coaching over the Chargers with Brandon Staley, and I have the Vikings catching their first win of the season here in what I presume will be a shootout to get their first win to open up one and two. In week four, the Vikings will be facing off against the Carolina Panthers, and with their brand new number one overall pick in Bryce Young with the mediocre wide receiver core at best, the Vikings defense should be able to handle and contain Young to a certain extent. I'm not I'm not knocking Young down at all, but I don't think he'll be able to solely beat the Vikings, and the Vikings should win this game. But I feel like it'll be a lot more difficult to catch this win as it always is for the Vikings, but I still have them winning the game to reach 500 at 2-2. Two two. Heading into Week 5 at 500, the Vikings will be squaring off against the defending Super Bowl champions in the Kansas City Chiefs, and this will be the Vikings' real, real test to see where they are as a team against the best quarterback in the league in Patrick Mahomes and how the Vikings will be able to compete against the Chiefs. And I think this game will be the dictator of our season just to indicate if we can compete. And But I was taking this loss to the Chiefs here, but not in blowout fashion, though. though. But um, I don't think we're going to get blown out. I think the Vikings might be able to be semi-competitive. Hopefully, I don't eat my words and it's a blowout. But I have the Vikings taking the L here in a close one to the Chiefs. Record in week six is two and three facing off against the Bears. And the real challenge against the Bears will be containing a young year three Justin Fields, who can be a huge threat on the ground. And seeing how the Vikings can contain DJ Moore as Fields has a great passing ability that I think is really undervalued. But I think the high octane Vikings offense will be too much for the Bears young defense. And I have the Vikings taking the win here by I think I think they'll win over ten by over ten points. Now heading to week seven against the 49ers, the Vikings are back at 500, sitting at three and three. Now the Vikings are facing off against the 49ers, who are entering the season just falling short of Super Bowl appearance. And with the young gun and Brock Purdy, they're trying to build a championship contending team. And I think they're really close to actually being able to do that. Now in history in past years, the Vi- the 49ers have always opened up kind of slow, but don't let this fool you. They're actually a pretty pretty well, a pretty pretty damn good team. And I the I th- but I still think. Their defense is elite, elite. But I feel like the Vikings are going to shock the world here and get a win here. Now, call me biased a little bit. I think they will get a win here. I, I, this feels like a Vikings fashion game where they're mid, they're being mid for most of the season and they get a huge win. But then we're heading to Lambeau at 4-3 and three and the Vikings are facing the Packers and their new quarterback, Jordan Love, after the end of Rodgers, after the Rodgers era. And the Vikings never do well in Lambeau, and I haven't taken a loss here to open up the season to fall back down to 500 at 4-4. Four and four. Now, week 9 against the Falcons, the big test will be how the Vikings can contain the Falcons' running game with Bijan and Tyler Algier, whilst being conscious of the fight of the Falcons' deadly receiving core with Kyle Pitts and Drake London, who are both kind of underutilized in my opinion. The only way I see the Vikings lose in this game, though, is A, the Vikings choke per usual, or B, Desmond Ritter has improved and can efficiently pass and be a real threat. But I, I don't think that it's going to be enough to, for the Vikings to lose, and I had the Vikings win this one in a close one. Week five facing off, week, week 10 facing off against the Saints, sitting at 5-4. and four. Now, facing off against the Saints is always a tough battle for the Vikings, and I always hate the Saints. I have always have. I always have. Um, They always give them their skin ever since Bounty Gate. They call me salty, but I don't care. And with the Saints' new addition and Derek Carr, they have a pretty good QB1, but the question is, is, can Michael Thomas stay healthy? And is he even effective anymore? Like, we haven't seen him play a full season in four years. And along with Alvin Kamara's legal troubles catching up with him, this team has some drama to kind of take care of. And I think the Vikings will be able to catch a win here, improving to 6-4, and four, heading into Week 11 against the Denver Broncos. Now, the Broncos' defense was insane last year. Very, very gritty, tough defense under, and under new head coach Sean Payton I expect their offense to finally improve to to the ex- expectations we had for him now Russell Wilson will be very good and I have the Vikings losing this game um I, I just think Sean Payton will be able to elevate the offense the Broncos offense back to what we all expected them to be like 
and I have a feeling that their defense will stay the same. Well, it will stay the same, so I have the Vikings taking a loss to fall to 6-5. and five. Week 12 against the Bears, same thing as I said earlier in the year. This young Bears defense, I don't think they can keep up and compete with the Vikings offense, but I think this can be a close one, definitely a losable game because we usually split with the Bears, but we haven't in a couple of years, or we haven't, we didn't last year. We almost did, though, but I have the Vikings sweeping the Bears this year to improve to 7-5. and five where we'll be heading into the bye week, and a late bye in the season is always a good refresh. Is always good to refresh the players and try to make a playoff push, which I think is very, very good. Now, week 14, we're facing the Raiders, and the Vikings are going to go in this game feeling refreshed after a bye, feeling confident, but I have them losing this game just because the Vikings always play horrible after bye weeks in their history. It's always been a thing. They come off a game. They come off a bye, and they all they usually lose. I don't think anything will change, and they're gonna be heading into the Bengals at seven and six. Now the Bengals will be a very tough team to beat. It'll either be an offense, a huge offensive battle, or a blowout in the Bengals' way, and where the Bengals will blow out the Vikings. But both defense units aren't the best, so I expect high scoring. But this is where, if Brian Flores can utilize Harrison Smith in the blitz, I think. The Vikings have a high chance at winning this game. If the Vikings can create pressure against the Bengals that will line like the Chiefs have been able to do, that is the key to the Vikings winning this game, along with being all right in coverage. But this game is giving me vibes that the Vikings are going to give up Jamar, 100 receiving yards, T. Higgins, 100-plus receiving yards, and Tyler Boyd, around 80 receiving yards. I feel like Joe Burrow will go off, but I feel like the Vikings offense can compete, and the gritty Vikings, I have a weird gut feeling, I guess. Call me a little biased, but I feel like this game, I feel like the Vikings are going to win in a crazy shootout, possibly game of the year type fashion, like last year against the Bills. The Vikings just came off a very tough win, I feel like, against the Bengals, and they're tired, and I have Detroit beating the Minnesota 31-17. Now, why so specific? Um, I feel like it's going to be a 10-plus, 14-plus win for the Lions, because the Vikings will be tired and not prepared for Detroit. And I have them taking the W over the Vikings. Now, this will be this might hold true like last year after the Vikings beat the Bills in a very, very tough game. They come back and they get shocked at home against the Cowboys. They get blown blown out. And I feel like this will be kind of the same same thing, same situation. Now we're heading into week seventeen. This is a very, very pivotal game for the Vikings. They're eight and seven. If they win this game, they might possibly make secure a playoff spot of the Packers. And the Packers will, will be tight in this division, along with the Lions and Vikings. Now, this is possibly the most pivotal game of the season, and this could definitely decide playoff seeding. Now, the Vikings already lost in Lambeau, and they usually split, and I'm happy that we were finishing off in Minneapolis for the season finale, so we get good energy, good momentum heading to the playoffs if we can make it. And for that matter, I have the Vikings beating the Packers in a close game to advance to two games over 500. Now, the record heading into Week 18 is 9-7 and seven against the Lions, who I have already secured. I think the Lions would by now secure the division. The Vikings are very tired and exhausted facing the Lions, and that threw them off in their prior Week 16 matchup. But I feel like the Vikings will be get their revenge, and will, they will be prepared and rested to secure playoff position in by being Detroit on quote me on this 28-24 to finish 10-7 and, and I have to make in a playoff wild card. But here is my division standings. At first place I have the Lions, second place I have the Packers, third place I have the uh, second place I have the Vikings, third place I have the Packers, and coming in fourth is the Bears again. Hope you all enjoyed this video. If you like to see more of this long in depth video, make sure you leave a like, subscribe, and I'll catch y'all in the next one. Anthony Lopez, Marshall, he's got Throws, caught, Jeffrey.